Vamos lá. Oi. Ah, yeah, I forgot to intro. Yeah, maybe you guys want to get to the video already because this video is kind of meaningful. Actually, no, it's not kind of. I believe it is meaningful because it's, it's about XA, just to get, you know, just to get things started. It's about XA because Finley is right. Finley is right. X8 is one hell of a series i tell you so many beautiful characters so many memorable memorable moments and, and some quirks you know what i mean but today is not really much of the funny stuff where you know things that you know would generally come up in the facts but something that i kind of learned after watching it after watching um x8 well, not completely because I didn't watch the um, uh, movie yet, which, which um, Finley recommended for me because I want to do something of my own accord, um, given the fact that, in my opinion, um, XA had a bit of a, let's just say, not, well, not too much of a bit, but I would say it just taught me a lot of things while watching it. So, you know, I'll just go to it. So, yeah, and, you know, just to let you know, there will be spoilers. And also, I would say mildly heavy topics, I would say. So, you know, just as a warning. Let's go here. So, I will be looking more into the moral moral lessons, you know, the lessons I kind of learned and which I also want to like share with you using the examples from XA from some of the episodes and focusing each on one specific character. And, you know, maybe detailing it with my um, personal experiences as well, because I, the only thing that I realized that was not in my videos, especially was personal experiences. And I just wanted to get to it, so let's just start, because here it is, a deeper analysis of X and how it impacted me. So, the turn of lesson number one. I thought it's gonna be sad. Well, lesson number one. Sacrifices are sometimes needed. This is one of the only times where we see hero who is often just you know the oh, the confident, cool you know, surgeon who mostly looks on people, but this time we actually see him opening up to his emotions and being honest with himself. And just to let you know, if you don't, if you didn't watch X8 yet, Hiro had a, has a dark story because his girlfriend Saki was infected with the bug viruses, infected by graphite. And as you can see in the um, picture over there, he feels largely responsible because the reason why Saki died, well, you know, one of the reasons why it escalated, her stress escalated was because Hiro wasn't there to see her. To see her. And, you know, continuing on, like I saw, I, 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 and, you know, this picture was um, in episode 34. And in, you know, the next episodes, we unfortunately see Saki dying. Well, not Saki dying, well, her data is released. She cannot be, she cannot retain her conscience or her physical form anymore, which basically is just a symbol of her death right in front of Hero. 
and how it links to the um, heading is that Hero actually just Hero had to um, briefly betray um, CR. They had to betray, he had to betray Emu and uh, Taiga to be with the main to be with the villain, you know, Damas Mune, aka uh, Kamerade Chronicle, because Chronicle used data of um, Saki as like a lure to like kind of like you know desperately well you know make him desperate make hero desperate and that's why he was in a huge dilemma to either get what he wants personally which is Saki back to life or to protect his friends and the whole of Japan from the bucks of pandemic in the end he chose to protect his friends and his country by the cost of Saki. And it is a dark truth, but sometimes, and you know, not even I can say it properly because I really don't, I haven't really, you know, had a huge experience with it before, but sometimes when we have a dilemma, we have to really see things in the bigger picture gotta kind of zoom out, zoom out and really see the scale of our actions and the situation around it. I mean, to give the example of Hero, he chose CR, Emu, Taiga, and the rest of Japan more than Saki because he knew that saving Saki is redundant because then the whole of Japan will suffer under the Buxton pandemic. So as a surgeon, as a doctor, in fact, the world's best doctor, as he likes to call himself, he chose what really mattered to everyone, everyone in his country, his people, the people who he promised and which Saki told him to protect. But he had to lose something from within himself because of that. Now, on to the next one. We have Taiga. You can see we have Taiga. And the lesson there is that whilst you can, you know, we have to accept some sacrifices, sometimes you can be a sacrifice. And the thing about Taiga is that he, he had a huge rivalry between Hero before because Taiga was the doctor who take care of Saki before she passed away. And because of the fact that, I think if I'm mistaken, the fact that he, she passed away, so that's the reason why he lost his license and that's why he became the unlicensed doctor well, from one of the series. And that's why in episode 30, when he was mocked by Lavalika, he said to him and everyone that he has, well, first of all, that he doesn't want to be liked, which is probably super badass. But more importantly, because he has nothing to lose, he actually lost everything he lost his um, license, he lost, you know, his friends, you know, back then in the flashback, he already lost Dr. Kagami and Poppy's respect. He already had Hero blaming him. So, because of that, he chose to fight the Bucks survivors himself. And as the picture in the, in the right chose, as long as he is is, you know, if as long as he doesn't have anything else to lose in his life or anything he wants to like gain, he can use himself to fight off the danger so that no one else has to fight themselves. And we, you know, we don't always, we don't all have to be hopeless. We don't all have to, you know, lose all our earthly possessions, but. The fact is, is that 
sometimes we just gotta be there for people, people who, you know, cannot take the weight by themselves on their shoulders. They can't, they cannot take it on the backs. But if you have the courage and not only that, but the commitment and the you know selflessness as Tiger right here, you can be that person. You know, you can be that you can be a person's shield. So that they don't have to go through a lot of pain, a lot of trauma. And that's what lesson two is moving on. We have this lesson here. Not to judge every villain from the cover. And um, I don't know how to, um, well, you know, starters, before we, I thought that Don Kuroto was, you know, like AKA Commander X8, AKA Dangerous Zombie was the main villain and was in a sense of psycho from the very start without realizing until episode, I think episode year two, that his father, Don Masamune, was the man who manipulated him, quote, who manipulated him and took his ideas and exploited him for his own, for his own uh, benefits. And, you know, although it was just brief, in my opinion, this caused a lot of mental trauma to um, Kuroto, especially as a son, to a point where he cannot take Masamune anymore and he said he's not his father anymore. That's just sad. It just shows how much of a damage, damaging impact Masamune had on Kuroto, and here's the thing about um, look from personal experiences of myself being a victim of bullying for a long time, being a person who you know who gets excluded, who's you know who's who had a history of friends you know leaving him, abandoning him. I can like kind of sympathize, I'm, I'll empathize with um, Kuroto because not villains weren't born evil because they were born human. Just, just like not all heroes were born good. I mean, everyone's born good, but what made them heroes in the first place? What made Iron Man to, you know, until he started to become Iron Man? What led Bruce Wayne to become Batman? Same for villains on the other side of the spectrum. What made them into villains? What turned them into, you know, quote unquote psychos where to a point where, you know, someone like Don Kuroto thinks that he's a god, they can do whatever the hell he wants. It's because he may have been, you know, for, for Kuroto's case, he may have been constricted. He may have been, you know, oppressed on all sides. And once he is free because you know, Masamune was in prison. Once he was free and got his father's seat as the CEO of GAM Corporations, he was finally out of the chains. He can do whatever he wants. And he wanted to use that freedom as openly as he wants. But unfortunately, because of how broken he is mentally, he used it for devious reasons. If anyone watching this, if you see like anyone who is hurting you, or anyone who's hurting other people for a specific reason or anything, or just for the sake of hurting others. You have every right to hate him or her, be angry, but just to let you know, FYI for your information, that person was a victim too, or rather is a victim, or in a house or, or any other tra traumatic, ex traumatic past or memory, just like Kuroto. Moving on, and this is for everyone. Be humble, and you'll see reality much clearly. Now I include Parallel because all this while he was, you know, I know he, in my opinion, and I hope you don't, you know, I hope you can, you know, respect, respect it. Inside of it's, you know, offensive, but I felt Pardo was a jerk. I thought Parallel was a jerk because he was the man who 
who just simply kill people for the fun of it. He thought it was a game. He thought that, you know, as the quote unquote protagonist of whatever game he's in, he can just simply kill people off. Even the real life people where they can't see each other again. He was, you know, for for something before, you know, camera camera chronos, sorry. Oh yeah, so I, I was supposed to say camera chronos, not chronicle earlier. I'm sorry about that. Before chronos came in, he was the leader of the now, you know, besides Graphite, he was the leader of the Boxster race. He wanted to, like, infect the whole of Japan. And that's the reason why so many deaths were caused. But then, episode 39, after, real after realizing that a Boxster can actually die and never come back, Emu kills him. And he finally understands what death is like because he experiences it. But not only that, but the fear of death because in the during the episode before we were um, thinking about the fear of death, or, you know, because Nico was infected by the Gamdeus virus and she was facing death, and more importantly, she was afraid. She expressed every part of her fear, like from what she says to her, to her, you know, body language was shaking like crazy. That shows that the fear of death is just terrifying. And what Emu just wanted to do is just to open Parallel's eyes so he can see what his action has caused to other people because he was a killer. And for him to die will allow them to, to you know, for him to be and his victim's shoes. But in the end, Parado was resurrected and became what he wanted, the protagonist of not only his game, but in the end, the whole, the, the whole series. Because even if people, even my, myself, even if we hate it, we gotta be humbled. Not that because we are supposed to be put down when we're wrong, when we're too proud for pro, you know when we're too proud of ourselves, but so that we can actually open our eyes to what's actually going on, so we can actually see the reality of maybe of our actions or maybe of our maybe ignorance or both. And just with the case of Parado, or rather Kamenar Paradox, in the end, he was able to atone for his crimes and actually contribute to saving the lives of people in Japan because he realized that what he did was wrong because he played with the lives of people and he was finally able to fix everything or all of them, but he was able to do something to contribute to the overall benefit of it. And the last lesson that I learned, destinies can be changed. It can always be changed. Like, I am just saying state says safe things right now, but if I was like, I don't know, in 10 years time to watch this video again, I could, you know, I could be wrong because looking into Poppy, she is a Buckster. If she's Asuna, she is Poppy people, Popo, a Buckster. She's supposed to infect people. She's supposed to kill the human race and eradicate them. And she became an evil character. She became a villain because of um, Lavalika. But in episode 31, Emu, because of what he did to Parado right here, opened her eyes. She opened her eyes because he trusted Poppy a lot because he had a lot of history with him. I with her, sorry, and knew her character that she is not the person who wants to harm anybody, but rather someone who wants to have fun with humans. But the problem was that she was a boxer. Her destiny was to infect, kill, and erase humanity. 
from existence. And that does not include being friendly with them. But in the end, she was able to change that. And instead of, you know, conforming to what she was supposed to be when she was born, she became one, she became the main reason why the whole Japan was able to recover from that Buxa pandemic through the Buxa vaccine to which she sacrificed her own life to, to save the lives of a whole country. And in a, as a link to real life, um, I don't know what example I could talk about, but in terms of destinies, I feel like when we are dedicated enough and you know, when we want to change, not that we're forced to, but that we have an actual motive to change and to, you know, why, and we know why we want to change. And if we are proactive enough to like make, take small, even baby steps to achieve that change in character or a situation, but in, in this context of character, it could be it could be possible. It can be actually. Like, you could be, I don't know. You could be like someone who someone like who I was before. You know, someone who was really shy. I'm still shy, but someone who you know was not only timid but very almost like a coward. He didn't stand up to you know. I didn't stand up to other people. I didn't, I didn't know how to defend myself, more importantly. I didn't know how to defend myself when I was attacked. When I was, you know, emotionally hurt by other people. But I chose a path and I chose to like be the opposite of a sheep and turn into, you know, not to boast, but a lion to be as hard as the sun, to be as bright as the sun, so no one could actually, you know, get near me. They know that I'm drawing a line, and that's the point about changing destinies. You become the opposite of who you are right now. And with the case of Poppy, she is supposed to be a villain. She belongs in the race of, of Kamara Exit's villains, yet she was Emu's and you know the rest of Sia's most trusted and beloved ally. And in the end, she became that. Well, that was heavy. <laughs> yeah, the, I know, huge change. And I can understand. Because this is, I would say, the first video where, okay, besides Finn's um, video on Chadwick Boseman's um, passing, this really dealt with like personal topics or, you know, like topics that kind of, you know, directly in, impact our, you know, attitudes, our like, you know, way of thinking, way of life, or our characters even. But the reason why I made this is because I feel like Kamen Rider and, you know, the rest of Tokus that's like, you know, even Ultraman, from, from Ultraman to Super Santa, even to Godzilla, all these shows have morals and have something to, you know, teach children. And, you know, even back then when I was in, um, when I was, you know, I was three to four years old, five years old, watching Dan O oh and Kabuto, I couldn't get it, but in the future, in the end, you know, watching all, you know, other um, camera series and even, you know, what, at least one Super Sentai series, I get to realize how important these messages are because even if we ignore them as like, you know, as teenagers, in real life it does, you know, affect who we are and the way we think because even the shows themselves showed that life isn't life isn't always happy. I know it look. I'll just stop there. Because I think I'm just getting too way too deep right now. 
Um, I'm not sure how to end this because I dealt with a heavy topic and there's something else I want to tell us to all of you, which I haven't also, I haven't told Finn this as well. But I think it's, you know, I don't, it, look, it's, I'll, I'll just get to a point. I, I'll, you know, I don't want to um, take it too long. Right? I don't want to like take it any more time to, you know, to not do another video and just shock Finley because this may be my last video in the Token Nerds YouTube channel. Not, you know, because unlike Finley, who is, in high school, I'm in college. And now this is, I'm in the, my third term and things are getting more, um, you know, it's getting more and more, um, you know, tiring for me. I have like five schedules. I, and soon I'm going to have to face like, you know, as, you know, internal, you know, assessments for each subject. I have to, you know, do my, a very important thesis, um, an essay, and plus like other things for like something for the theory of knowledge. And I also have to look at, you know, university applications. And, you know, not that I don't enjoy these, you know, these, these videos because, you know, you know, these, the last two videos that I made, this one and the Dendo theory was with a, time where I was able to like explore and, you know, be free of what I, where I can create is my creativity. But I feel that this, uh, you know, these videos, you know, these plans and the pressure I get to like, just to finish these videos and to make the content of it actually kind of drain my time and my energy. Not that I hate it, but as of now, it's not, the, it's not the best time for me because to next year, 2020, 2022, I will be going to university. And before that, I need to, you know, sacrifice a lot of my time and, you know, dedicate a lot to my studies, you know, random other things. And, you know, I may contradict my statement. I may, I may make future videos maybe mini videos, I don't know. But I kind of feel like this will be or would be or will or would be my last video because of the fact that things are getting much more um, busy for me. I need to focus more on my um, academics and I think that's like the only thing I can I can say as of now. I can guarantee, but I'm probably just going to like go on a hiatus from doing any videos. Not that I hate them because you know, after you know doing my doing those two last videos, I actually really enjoyed it a lot. Even if we're not getting like as much views as you know as other YouTube channels. I actually learned a lot from this experience and, you know, getting the praise from Finlay about my videos was actually really amazing as well. But I also need to, you know, focus on more important things. I need to set my priorities as well. And in any case, in any case, that's, I think that's the end of my video, of this video. I know this video has, is the most uh, heavy, I, I would say, out of all. If I don't make any videos, you know, in the future, then, you know, uh, from the bottom of my heart, um, let's see in Japanese, you know, um, koko no naka kara, honto ni, honto ni, arigatou gozaimashita. Or if I were to make, you know, if I have the time and energy and the dedication to actually make other videos, and if this is not the last, then, as usual, thank you very much.